in this video, I want to discuss the potential future for THC marijuana cannabis testing here in the United States as, again, cannabis use, THC use becomes more and more accepted, more and more states become either medical or recreational states. What is the potential future for the testing of marijuana? And we're talking about private employers and the federal government who still mandates not only drug testing, but drug testing specifically for THC cannabis marijuana. So what are the potential changes that could happen in the future again, as potentially cannabis becomes more and more accepted, more and more quote unquote legal. I think where we need to start is what the federal government is actually trying. And I say trying uh, with intention, they're trying to implement but they've been trying to implement it now for over a year, and that is changing or giving the option, I should say, for employees, again, that need to be tested by the federal government to be able to do a saliva test instead of a urine test. Again, there is a huge difference between testing times with a saliva test and a urine test. Basically, the saliva tests uh, is only for a few days after stopping use, whereas the urine test can be months. There's a major issue with this though. There needs to be two labs certified by the Department of Health and Human Services to be able to perform these tests. And up till now, no labs have actually been certified. So we're waiting now on labs to be certified. Now I have communicated directly with the Department of Transportation on why this is taking so long because it does affect me and, and how I operate in my business. And they have come back and said that really what's going on is the government now take this for what it is, the government is not the one holding up this situation, but that the labs basically move at their own pace. So the labs have to uh, apply to be certified and then they have to go through all of the necessary procedures to be certified and no labs have now done that, no labs up to this point. So then there are also companies that are working on breathalyzer devices which measure recent THC use to help law enforcement and employees assess potential impairments. So that's what the goal of a breathalyzer is. It's not to catch anyone that in the past three months has used THC at all. It's to make sure the person when you are testing them is not under the influence. So it's looking for different things. Again, a hair test was developed because that's kind of like a lifestyle test. It gives you an idea of what someone's done in the past several months. Your analysis is supposed to catch people that have recently used like in the past few weeks to a month, but as we know, it can catch people based on how, again, how much body fat they have and other factors like how often they use for months. The saliva test is a step forward because it just tracks the last couple days. But this would actually test if the person is under the influence at that given time, just like a breathalyzer test would for alcohol. I mean, that's kind of the point here is that we're trying to get parity with alcohol. Since 1950, police have measured ethanol in the breath as an indicator for alcohol impairment. And there's a standard for that. It is kind of set in stone. But with cannabis, it's more complicated. Unlike ethanol, which is exhaled in copious amounts in a gaseous vapor, the main psychoactive ingredient in cannabis, THC, is exhaled in very trace amounts via tiny aerosol particles. So after consuming alcohol, a person exhales 1 million times more ethanol with a single breath than they would in 12 breaths after consuming cannabis, says the study. With THC, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. That is a quote. And THC also, it lingers in tissues. And again, I've made plenty of videos about this, especially body fat. And that makes it hard, again, to discern with blood or breath whether someone used an hour ago or last week. So there are, again, several cannabis breathalyzers that exist on the market and some are being tested by law enforcement, but it's unclear whether they can actually be trusted. And this is important not only for people, the government that are trying to catch people that are under the influence, but also for the people being tested. So scientifically, they say we are just not there yet. There's too many questions that need to be answered first in an unbiased setting. So what about a what they're calling a two breath test? So in a previous pilot study, the team concluded that while it's possible to, to detect trace levels of cannabis in a breath, 
a single breath measurement cannot reliably indicate whether cannabis was used or whether that person was actually impaired at the time that they were tested. And that, again, could leave the door open for someone to be wrongfully accused of driving under the influence. So it's just not that reliable. It could err on the side of making somebody look like they're impaired when they're actually not. And again, that's a huge problem in the matter of social justice. But what if you took multiple breath samples? So we'll talk about the multiple breath samples here in just a second, but obviously we want this not to be an issue. We want people to not be falsely accused. That happens in with DUIs as well. The breathalyzer, while that is a, a, a kind of a factual and, and hard data there, with the field sobriety tests, again, I'll just uh, switch over to this YouTube video. Uh, there's been, there's certainly, because they're more subjective field sobriety tests, they can cause, uh, because the, the troopers, the uh, cops, they are not infallible. They are looking and they're trained to look for certain things while you're doing these field sobriety tests. But again, it's more subjective. So again, this trooper here, I got this video off of YouTube, has arrested eight sober drivers for DUI based on the field sobriety test. So they are not infallible. And we don't want this situation going on with cannabis as well. It could it can potentially, obviously, ruin people's lives. In theory, if a driver were to take two breathalyzer tests 10 to 20 minutes apart after using cannabis, their second reading would be lower. So they take one after using cannabis, it's higher, and then the second one is lower. If they hadn't used recently, the two numbers would be the same. So again, this is something they are testing out, but again, there's no consensus yet on this and the ability to actually use this for purposes of potentially a DUI or a hiring situation or really anything else official. So in my opinion, the most likely outcome in the very near future is these two labs will get certified again by the federal government and be able to perform on safety sensitive employees, federal employees that need to be tested the saliva test as an option. And I think if that happens and the federal government accepts saliva testing, you'll see more private employers probably switching from a urinalysis, again, because of how busted and archaic a urinalysis is for drug testing, how easy it is, it is to beat, et cetera. I've done plenty of videos on this channel about that. You'll see more private employers switching to saliva testing now. Does that necessarily catch people that are under the influence? It does not, but it is a step forward. Will we ever get to a point where we can use a breathalyzer to detect or to tell if someone is actually under the influence at the time they are being tested? I think it's good that we get this, get the science correct on breathalyzers first, not only for the employer's sake, not only for the government's sake, but also for the people being tested as well. We don't want people being tested and unfairly discriminated against.